All right, so someone asked me a question earlier this evening about uh, more advanced keying techniques. And I pointed them to an additive keying, te uh, additive, additive keying tutorial, uh, but it was for flame. And I said, you know, you can, you can adapt this to fusion. But then I realized, why don't I just make a tutorial for fusion? So start here with the, uh, this very familiar dude from the Tears of Steel project from the Blender Foundation. Uh, I think they also called it uh, Project Mango. Uh, this is free to use. You can, if you can find it, you can download it, uh, use it however you like. And I grabbed a random, let's look at this the way it's supposed to be looked at, kind of stylized warehouse background from uh, Flickr. I should probably attribute this properly. This is, I don't need that kind of drama in my life, he told her, by Thomas Hawk on flickr.com slash photo slash Thomas Hawk slash 260-3314-8490. Some rights reserved. Attribution, non-commercial. So I won't be making any money from this tutorial. All right, so then I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick quick and dirty reformat on this. Uh, I know I want it to be a little bit bigger. Probably reposition it, uh, something like that. Uh, and then defocus, probably two is fine. And then let's see, we're going to want a basic key here. So I'm just going to grab Delta, uh, turn my LUT back on. Oh, I'm going to need to gamut this. Source space is sRGB, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to send it to the out output space of no change. So it's just going to linearize it. So now we see nothing. That's interesting. Why do we see nothing? What did I do? Huh. Weird. All right. So linearized and defocused. I got my delta key here. I'm going to just grab my background color here. I'm not going to be too serious about it. Just going to knock all the black out. I think I'm going to leave the white where it is. Uh, if I was being more uh, thorough, you know, I'd pull keys for the different parts of it so that I get all of this paneling. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just interested in hair up here. And because I do not like what Delta Keyer does, it's not Delta Keyer necessarily, it's the uh, color difference keying method, but I don't like its despill. So I'm gonna use a matte control, and I'm gonna despill with a matte control. Set this to well done is usually good, and just push it all the way up. Let's try burnt and see what it does. That discolors thing too much. Well done is fine. And then I'm going to pipe the delta keyer into the foreground of the matte control. Change combine to combine alpha. And then if we are looking at the checker underlay, we'll see that is doing its thing. But then we want to post multiply the image so we just totally knock all that out. And now what we see is we have actually lost some of this detail. Like note particularly this little loop here. I look at my matte control, that loop is, is mostly gone. Um, and if I just put this over our background, put this over our background, there we go. Uh, let's see, uh, that's a, not a bad composition, shooting blind. Uh, we see, you know, this information up here that we wanted to keep is just gone. We don't see it. So we could play with the mat some more and we'd risk bringing in, you know, all of this noise, um, and it would it'd just be a, a real fight to try and get that back in there. But there is a better way, and they call this an additive key, uh, which is kind of a bad term, a uh, bad, uh, bad name for it because it's not actually a key. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to extract that information from the, the plate and print it into the background so that when we put our foreground over the background it goes on top of its own detail that's already in there. 
So how do we do that? Let's start with the clean plate node. We look at this and what we want to do is we want to grab our key color and immediately you know we've lost all of our, our actual foreground but it's missed all of this detail that we want to uh, we want to retrieve. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to use the erode control and we want to get all of that into this mat. You know, I can see this little bit right here is what I'm, I'm going to try and get all of that. So we've got all our detail and now we need to grow those edges back in creating our clean plate and then I'll just go fill it down to the bottom and now this I want to subtract from our original plate so the plate goes into the background of a channel booleans and the clean plate node goes into the foreground of the channel booleans and I'm going to set this to subtract um, and normally when I do a subtract like this I'd want to say do nothing with the alpha but in this case it doesn't matter because we're not going to be using the alpha for anything at all so we look at it and we get this awful awful mess very very pink um, and what's important here is the areas where we don't see any detail. If you look down here, of course it's not showing anything right now in my status bar. As I mouse over this, I've got some uh, negative pixel values down there. And those are going to be important for what we're doing. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're in uh, floating point uh, color depth here in order for this, this to happen. If you're in integer, you won't get the negative pixels and this won't work. All right, so the next thing I want to do, I'm going to drop a brightness contrast in here and just desaturate this because all of this pink is going to be bad for my eventual in image. I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm going to leave a little bit of that color in there. Uh, I may come back and take the rest of it out uh, once I see how it works, how it looks. But for now, there we go. All right, and now I need a pair of brightness contrast tools. And with these, I'm going to clamp. Uh, this one I'm going to call clamp white. And I'm going to turn on clip white. And the other one I'm going to call clamp black. And as expected, I'm going to clip black. But I want this to be a, a fork. So I've got one image where I've clamped the bright values, so nothing is going above one. Another image in which I've clamped the black values, nothing is going below zero. And now these two images, I want to multiply by my background. So I've got my defocused background here. So I'm just going to add a pair of merges. I'm going to set them to multiply mode. And I'm going to take my defocused background, not the, not the composite, not this thing, but just the background. And I'm going to pipe that into both of these guys. So now I've got the background multiplied by each of those. And then those I'm going to merge together. And this is going to be an add. I'm just going to add the, these two versions of the image together. Um, in order to do that with a merge, you could use a channel booleans to do this, um, but on the, you can also do it with a merge. You just take the alpha gain down to zero, and that disregards the alpha in, in terms of the blending and essentially just adds the two images together. Right, we need one more piece here. Another brightness contrast on both of these. And on these, the only control we're interested in is gain. Um, if I'm looking at this and I just move the gain around, you can see that's it's just going to make, make these details that we're, we're pulling back out brighter or darker. All right, so then the next thing I want to do is I want this to be limited to just kind of this halo around uh, my, my actors. Um, if I had, let's look back at this. I don't actually have any uh, extra stuff back here. If there were like lighting gear or boom microphones or something, I'd want to mask those out uh, manually. Um, but I also don't want to get all of the like the 
the noise that might be back here. I've knocked most of it out with Delta Keyer um, in the clean plate, but just in case there's some back there, uh, it'll show up in it's like a, oh, that's something I should mention. I probably, um, there's a danger in using the clean plate node on footage because not every frame is the same. Um, and you can you can play this and it'll go ahead and it'll, it'll do its thing. Um, oh, it's really slow. Uh, but what you'll find is that the, the changes from one frame to another will create some sizzle in the, uh, the edges. So I like to just add a time stretcher here, uh, remove the animation and just set it to whatever frame I'm looking at, which in this case happens to be zero, so that works out, and set it to nearest. So that way we've just got a, a freeze frame here. Uh, so where was I? I was talking about, right, uh, I've got my alpha coming here from this. So I'm going to just go ahead and make a bitmap node and just really crunch this in. Uh, I want this to be a, a very contrasty alpha. And then I want to erode it. Actually, I want to dilate it make sure I'm looking at it dilated a bit so that I'm just getting outside of the the details that I want to add let's just make sure I'm outside all of that there we go and I'm just gonna blur it a little bit all right so then this I'm going to just use as a mask on a brightness contrast. And I think I ought to apply it inverted. And it's going to gain down. So we've got this, and I'm just going to knock out everything outside of uh, my erosion. And I ought to make that a little bigger. Ooh, maybe a little bigger still. Is it doing anything? Apparently it's got a uh, upper limit to how how much eroding it's going to do. I can put two of them in, maybe. What am I actually looking at here? It seems to be working. Well, apparently I don't have that information in my uh, original map. All right. Probably outside the clean plate. So probably what I need to do is erode this a bit more. I think I was fine. All right. That's beside the point. So now this is just making sure that any information outside of this bit of mat is not going to contaminate our background. And speaking of contaminating the background, this is where we finally get that going. So I've got my background and I'm going to add this image to it. And again, a merge with alpha gain down to zero becomes an add. And now you can see we've got this ghostly imprint uh, of our plate on our background. And we're going to use this to substitute for the original background. So I'm going to make a dissolve here. This isn't necessary. I just want to have an easy way to A, B this. A, B this. So I'm going to throw the, uh, the additive key into the foreground of a dissolve so we can look at the difference between the two. If I disable this, this is our original comp, and this is the one with the added detail. So original added detail. And you can see we just got a little bit more of this like almost ethereal hair detail there coming in. 
Um, and now we can come over here to these brightness contrasts and we can adjust the intensity of that detail. So we just want to get a little bit like, you know, there's, there's some light glinting off of it. And we can look over it on the other side and see what the, the black's doing. And you'll, you'll notice it does bring, e bring in some more of that noise. Got a little noise detail. Uh, so it might be worthwhile to uh, run neat video over this or something like that. Or if you're in Resolve, it's got a, a better denoiser than Fusion, Fusion Studio does. Um, but again, let's just compare. You can see we got a little bit nicer. We got just some some more of that detail in it. And I think I mentioned earlier that I might come back and, and tweak this saturation. You did get a little too pink up there. So I can I can just go ahead and cut that all the way down to to zero. And this is essentially black and white. <clears throat> and that is the additive keying method as applied in fusion. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.